Hello. So today what I'm going to do is I am going to talk with you guys about how to tell if your torque converter is locked up. I am in a 2020 Hyundai Tucson and the reason why I want to do this video is basically right now torque converters are becoming a little bit more complicated and the lockup clutches are so seamless that literally it's one of those things where um, you know as a consumer sometimes you're just not quite sure. With how these transmissions are built now they have torque converters that have multiple clutch lockup discs that basically increase surface area for the clutch to engage so it can actually engage at a very low speed now most cars usually they'll tell you this is that most cars don't hit lockup until about i would say 40 miles an hour usually some vehicles can lock up a little bit earlier but in newer transmissions such as those in mazdas they actually lock up in second or third gear so You'll be able to tell as of right now. Um, we are going to go ahead and go a little bit faster here, but I'm going to show you guys through the tachometer what you're going to be looking at. So as of right now, it is unlocked. It is hovering at idle just because the transmission's freewheeling. But as we go forward, you'll notice a pause somewhere. There we go. There's our pause. And now when I let my foot off the gas, the RPMs don't move. And when I decide to go forward, it did unlock just there, but now it relocked. And now my foot is on the gas and I'm accelerating, shifted up into fifth gear. And as you can see, I'm still accelerating, but my RPMs are not fluctuating. So the best way to tell is RPM fluctuations. And this mainly occurs um, when the torque converter is disengaged. So when the clutch is disengaged, the RPMs fluctuate a little bit just because the torque converter uses fluids or uses the transmission fluid, it circulates it around to basically allow for slippage between the engine and the transmission so you don't stall. But when you are going fast enough and you're cruising, the torque converter will engage the clutch and basically what it'll do is it'll mimic a manual transmission as you can see. So it's, my foot is off the gas, it is riding down as you saw, it did just unlock there. So that's basically how these lockup clutches work. Now, basically in uh, older vehicles such as Ford Expeditions, GMs and such, when you let your foot off the gas, the torque converter clutch will disengage automatically. If you drive an older Honda or even an older Nissan, you may not notice that the torque converter disengages because it won't do it until it hits a certain RPM. Now, as you can see, it did just unlock there, but now it's going to relock up and then it will shift up into the next gear. And now it's certainly locked because my foot is on the gas and the RPMs are not fluctuating and I'm still accelerating. And then to just disengage there and now it's going to start downshifting, but my foot goes back on the gas, no RPM fluctuation. So the torque converter is locked up. Another thing you can do to tell is let your foot off the gas is the main thing. And the reason being is that if you have one of, if you have a vehicle that does have a torque converter that stays locked up when your foot is off the gas, then you'll notice that you're going to start slowing down pretty significantly just due to the fact that now you're going into engine braking, which is why these torque converters also stay locked up pretty, pretty uh, aggressively just because it wants to mimic that manual transmission and give you the best fuel economy. Now, I should have prefaced this, but this really only works for cars that have a traditional 6, 7, 8, 10-speed automatic. Because if you do have a vehicle equipped with a CVT, the vehicle actually changes ratio so much, it actually gets a little confusing. CVTs will lock up pretty early, sometimes as low as 10 miles an hour. And uh, you will notice that CVTs get way better fuel economy for that reason. Okay. I guess no one can figure it out here. All right, here's a great example of lock up. As you see, it just locked up there, and now we're shifting in direct drive. Letting my foot off the gas. As you see, the RPM stay constant. Now putting my foot back onto the gas, unlocks, and then relocks up again. And then I am keeping my foot on the gas to accelerate, and the RPMs are not moving. So that's about it, folks. Also, too, just a side note, when you hit someone's car, please tell them. Somebody scratched my bumper today. And I think it was 
somebody who... Go ahead. No, go, go, go. Dude, you have the right of way. You have the walkway. Go. But it's one of those things where uh, someone scratched my bumper and I'm really upset. So that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, please like and subscribe. I'll try to get a video on the 2016 SRT392. That's the next car I'm trying to do a POV drive on. It's just it hasn't really been working out too well. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.